I have a lot of respect for people who give it their all. People who give it 100%. It doesn't matter what they do for work. But I feel like if you are employed and you're being asked to do a job, you should give it everything. You should work hard. Now, I know there's a lot of people that have jobs where they're being asked to do things that is kind of like not what they were really hired for or they're being overworked, situations like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the basic principles of your job. So if you are a cashier and you work at a grocery store helping customers, you know, being a decent human being, being nice to people, being courteous. If you're a teacher doing your best to explain things to the students, helping the students when they need help, you know, being a decent human being. If you're a doctor treating your patients with respect, you know, listening to their concerns. Now there's jobs where you're being asked to do things that are just beyond kind of the scope of what you signed up for. And that sucks. That's not fun. We all get that. We all get stressed from work. No job is perfect. Even teaching is not a perfect job. But I think that if you're working somewhere, you should always try to do a good job, whatever that means. In this video, I want to talk about bad math teachers because I received an email from someone who was saying that they were in a class and their teacher was terrible and there was stuff on the test that they didn't cover in class. You know, what can they do? It was a really desperate email. Before I respond to that, let's talk about what is a bad math teacher. And I think that the best way to describe a math teacher that's bad is to start with, what do we see as a good math teacher? What's, what's a good math teacher? To me, the best math teachers, and this is, this is going to sound strange, but this is just my opinion. Some of the best math teachers I've had, the ones I've admired the most, are the ones that you could tell were genuinely trying. I had this teacher once for discrete mathematics. He had the thickest accent ever. Like his accent was so thick. And I think he was aware of that. So when he taught, he taught really, really slow. It's like, X plus two, he'd write really, really slow. And he took his time. You could tell with every marker stroke, because he used a marker and he wrote like on this projector that was displayed on the screen, like on the, on the board, you could tell that every stroke mattered. Like he was making a genuine effort to explain everything as clear as possible. I had the same experience in grad school with a teacher I took for cryptography. He was from Korea. He's retired now and he taught so carefully. You could tell he knew that his communication skills weren't perfect. So he made like this huge effort to compensate for that. And that's just one example of, I think where teachers go the extra mile. So I think that that's a good teacher. That's someone who really cares, who's really trying to do a good job. Just like if you work at Starbucks and someone comes in and orders a coffee and you're nice to them, same thing, you know, being nice to someone can really make their day. Good math teachers care about students. You know, when, when students ask questions, you answer them. Don't, don't make them feel dumb. That's a big one. And I think that a lot of teachers do it accidentally, but sometimes perhaps it's intentional. So in that case, that's no good. If you're a student and you ask your teacher something and you feel offended or you feel like the teacher responded in a negative way, most of the time, it's not the case, right? Try to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think that as students, I remember, I'm remembering myself as a student, we tend to be more critical of how the teacher responds to our questions. Like, oh, you know, the teacher doesn't like me. The whole teacher doesn't like me thing was a really common theme when I was in school. However, my attitude towards teachers was very, very different. It was very distant. You know, when I was a student, I would take a class and I would have a teacher, which I thought was terrible. And I basically sucked it up and didn't say anything and sat in the back. 
and then just did my best. And I had teachers make rude comments to me sometimes. One time I told this teacher that I wanted to study mathematics and he made some comment referring to that guy, um, the Unabomber, who, you know, studied math and lived in the woods. He said, oh, you might end up living in the woods like that guy, you know. So comments like that, probably just in fun. Looking back, I think, oh, wow, that's that's kind of funny. That person was not being so nice, right? But it didn't really offend me at the time. I'm not that easily offended. So, yeah, I think that's something to take away from this is when you're speaking to teachers, if you feel like they're offending you, most of the time, they're not. They're not. They're just people too. Just like the person at the store who might be rude to you. Same thing. What else makes a good teacher? Teachers who care. Teachers who actually give homework and grade it. I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Teachers, you know, their job is to teach you and to evaluate you. And I think sometimes I've heard stories of teachers where their classes are so easy, you don't have to do anything. And so you kind of just like take this class and you don't really learn. I think that makes a bad teacher. Bad teachers are teachers who don't teach, basically. So a good teacher cares about their students. They teach the material and they treat the students with courtesy and respect. A bad teacher does not do those things. Now let's talk about how you can actually deal with bad teachers. You know, what do you, what do you do if you're taking a class and you're in a situation where, and this is like the worst situation. This is like the email I received. This person is taking a class. Their teacher is not explaining things and they have things on the test that aren't showing up in class or in the book. In situations like that, then I think you really need to go see your teacher and talk to them during their office hours, you know, and ask them, hey, you know, what, what, what can I do to prepare myself better for the test? I see that we had, you know, this question and this question, and this question, but I just don't feel like I could have figured out these questions based on the information that was covered in class. Most of the time when that happens, what you'll find is that the techniques used in those problems were somehow covered in class. In fact, the only time in my entire college career, and I took so many math classes, it's, it's ridiculous. I became a professional math class taker. The only time I actually ever encountered a class where I had a test, where the material on the test just seemed really foreign compared to the material in the class was in graduate level analysis. Our first test, the teacher gave the test back and he said, oh, the solutions were easy. And then he gave us the solutions and I looked at all of the solutions and none of them made sense. I thought, whoa, this is really hard. You know, I finally understood them after, you know, looking at them for a while, but the techniques used in the solutions were not really reflected in the homework or anything. At that point, what did I do? Well, I sucked it up and I started doing math problems from other books, which helped me and I ended up saving my grade and I got an A minus in that class. So that's what I would do. If you're in a situation where, you know, it just seems like everything that's being taught is not what's happening in class, like everything on the test is not what you're seeing in class, then maybe go ask for help and see your teacher. But when it comes to teachers that can't explain well or don't explain well or you feel don't explain well, a lot of times that is subjective. When I took Calculus 3, I had this teacher that everyone loved this guy. Everyone thought he was so cool. Oh, I love this class. It's such a great class. I got an A, but I did not understand anything in that class. We used the book by Stuart, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. And I ended up teaching myself and basically memorizing solutions because I didn't really understand the concepts. I didn't understand what was going on. I always had a hard time understanding mathematics. It wasn't until you know, it took me years. It wasn't until I really got into my later years as a math major that I started to really understand math. And graduate school is really when I started to get a lot better at understanding how and why math works. It takes some people longer than others. So yeah, just a random video about bad math teachers. I thought I would make this because I know there's a lot of people who are taking math classes out there in the world and they might feel like their teachers are no good or they can't explain. And I, I don't know. My attitude was always, you know, just do your best and keep trying, right? In every single math class I took, 
I maybe understood 60 to 70% of what was being taught. So by that very definition alone, all my teachers were bad, right? I don't think they were bad. I think they were good math teachers. I think it was just me, right? It just took me more effort to learn. Good luck. Keep doing math. Oh, if you want to learn math, before I forget, I do have courses. Check out my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. And you can learn some math there. And if you have a bad math teacher, just keep trying. I think the only, the worst thing, the worst thing is when, again, you have a test and the stuff on the test is not being covered in class. That's when you, that's, that's the point I think where you need to go see the teacher and just say, Hey, how can I prepare? But try not to take a combative approach, trying to attack anyone, try to be, you know, passive. Most of the time you're going to find that anytime there was something like that on the test that wasn't covered, the technique was covered. And again, in my experience, it only happened once and it happened in grad school. I hope it's been helpful. Good luck. Keep doing math.